Since the early days of Nomad Capitalist, I have taken a rather radical personal finance position. Don't contribute money to government retirement accounts. And for a lot of folks who've been new to our brand, they've taken issue with that, saying, I'm passing up on free money, and it's totally stupid to give up the benefits of investing in an IRA or a 401k. Well, today I'm going to share with you exactly why I still believe smart money isn't going in to government retirement accounts. Hey guys, my name is Andrew Henderson. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not here to give you personal finance advice, but I do want to give you something to think about because here at Nomad Capitals, we talk about how to legally reduce your taxes by going overseas, how to diversify and protect yourself with everything from second passports to investments in foreign countries. You can learn more and read close to 2,000 blog articles at nomadcapitalist.com. But what I want to talk about specifically today is the idea of government-sponsored retirement accounts. I'm going to primarily come at this from the U.S. perspective since that's where I grew up and, and lived the early part of my adult life. But you can apply this to any country with a similar program. And so here's how it works. You are someone who has a salary. Maybe you run a business. Every year in the United States, you can put money into your IRA, your individual retirement account. You can put, I guess, about $5,000 a year into that account. And you can actually deduct that from your taxes. Okay. Now, if you have a job or if you have a, a small business that you own, you set up some kind of retirement account in your small business, you can get things like 401ks or you know, self-employed IRAs, different kinds of retirement savings that are sponsored by the government. And generally, they all go by the same principle of either getting a tax write-off now or you're putting in money uh, that's after-tax money, but then it's going to grow without further taxes. Like so, a Roth IRA, for example, you put the money in, you don't get a tax benefit, but you know that that hundred dollars you put in now that's worth a thousand dollars. You know, twenty years from now, the thousand dollars comes out, and the nine hundred dollar growth is not taxed. Okay. Now, I've said. I've never put a dime into any of these programs, and my personal perspective is, I'm not giving you advice to do this, but I'm saying if you are following the Nomad Capitalist philosophy and you agree with what we talk about, you wouldn't put money into these programs. What happens is when you're putting money into something and getting something in exchange, there's always a trade-off. You know, any transaction has a trade-off, uh, and the trade-off that you're making with the government is you're putting money under their control, you are putting money under terms that they specify, and you're putting money under a program where they can change those terms at any time. So, you know, people put money into an IRA and they say, well, okay, uh, right now my tax rate is 40%. And so when I retire, my tax rate won't be as high as 40%. And so therefore, you know, I'm getting a tax deduction at a higher rate and I'll take the money out at a lower rate. But what you ignore is thinking that number one, why wouldn't you want to have as much money in retirement as you do when you're working? I mean, for me, my goal would be to have more money in retirement by making good investments over the years. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is, who's in charge of the tax rates? Not you. This is not an insurance transaction like with an insurance company where you, know, you have an annuity where in 40 years, here's the, uh, here's the table, here's what you're going to get. The government can change its mind at any time. And so if you're in a country that is a high tax country and the tax rates uh, are probably going to be going up, you're going to be left holding the bag. Now, let's look at countries like the United States. You've got a lot of politicians who want to tax the rich. You've got uh, people who are saying that anyone with wealth is not paying their fair share. Uh, and you've got you know, huge uh, debt, national debts that you think would eventually need to be paid off, right? And so how, are this, how is that going to all happen? Well, it's probably going to mean higher taxes for people who have been uh, thoughtful enough to save money. There is going to come a time when the haves and have-nots are literally going to be those with absolutely nothing, with zero dollars to their name, living absolutely paycheck to paycheck, barely squeaking by, and those with any kind of savings. Okay. I mean, already look at the percentage of people in the United States who could not pay a $500 emergency okay, without taking money out on their credit card. Look at that. It's a big percentage. Okay. So as times get tougher, as more people are discovering that you can go to other countries and hire people, and you can go to other countries and produce stuff in factories, and it's more affordable, you know, globalism. Right? As people have more choices, which is a good thing, 
you're going to see fewer and fewer opportunities in some of these high tax countries. And you're going to see a certain number of people who are going to be hurting. And they're going to literally have nothing. And they're going to say, hey, this guy with his 25 grand in his IRA, he's rich. And so not only can the government raise the tax rate, but also the government can uh, come in and, as they have in some Western countries, borrow money from your IRA or your Roth IRA or your 401k or whatever the retirement account is. It's happened. And you know, I look in the United States, private retirement money under the government's you know, rules is the biggest untapped source of wealth that they haven't really talked about. You know, they, they want to talk about taxing Wall Street and doing this and doing that. No one's ever talked. It's the last thing to talk about. And if you look at the trajectory over my lifetime of following politics since the mid-1990s, you know, I see more and more radical proposals about how to raise money for the government every year. I think there's a time when they could say, hey, we're going to borrow your money, or we're going to take part of your money, or you know what? You don't get to invest in stocks. We're going to take your money and put it into to treasuries. If you want to you know, have money in these programs, you got to sell out and you got to put it into what we tell you to. So that's what you're trading off. You know, you're getting the free money. People say, Andrew, you're an idiot. You know, why wouldn't you take the free match? Right? You make $100,000 at your job, your employer puts in 3%. That's $3,000 in free money. You know what I've learned working with folks who you know, have 50 million, 200 million, you know, a couple billion dollars? Sometimes they pass up free. In fact, they oftentimes pass up free. They realize that you know, trading their uh, freedom to do what they want is not worth a, a, you know, a quick uh, buck. You know, it's, it's not entirely dissimilar to the idea that uh, you don't want to trade your freedom for total security from the government. That's why these programs were created, because the government said, you know what, uh, we don't really want to be taking care of people when they're old. You know, Social Security ain't going to do the job, at least in full. So let's encourage people to put money into their own retirement under programs that we can change the rules for any time. We can tell you at what age you can take it out. We can tell you when you have to take it out, when you can't take it out, how much you can take out, what the terms are when you take it out, what the tax rate is when you take it out, what you can invest it in, what you can't invest it in. Now, if you've already got a retirement account in the United States, you can move that overseas. You can get what's called an offshore IRA. Now, if you have a small account, it may not be worth it. If you're talking six figures, it starts to be potentially worth it to where at least you can, without facing penalties of taking the money out, at least you can start investing it in places where there's more possibility for success. Because that's the second piece of the equation. Not only can the government control all the terms, but they can also control the terms of, you can't be investing in anything in the world in an IRA. And so, sure, the US stock market historically has had halfway decent returns. Uh, but if you're looking to the future, if you're going to be retiring in 20, 30, 40 years, is that going to be the best place to invest? I've been very clear. I have large positions in Asia, in real estate, in stocks, in debt, etc. And so, you know, people have, have commented, you know, Andrew's going to pass up a free match to go and invest his money in, in Cambodian real estate? Yeah, I am, because the total return on my Cambodian real estate, not only has the risk over the last 25 years been much lower, uh, but the total return is higher. Oh, and by the way, the total return is more tax advantaged because I no longer live in the United States. I no longer live in my home country to where I need to seek a tax advantage. My tax rate is relatively close to zero compared to people in the United States who are trying to avoid 35, 40, 50 percent tax. And so in addition to the fact that the government can change all the rules, in addition to the fact that we've seen the government actually help itself to people's retirement accounts, and I don't believe that's worth it for a free match, you're also giving up the ability to have the freedom to invest where you want. You're staying in the bubble of, this is the best country on earth, keep all your money here, trust us to protect you, trust our banks, they're wonderful, our stock market's wonderful, nothing will ever happen here. That has never worked throughout history. You don't want to keep all your eggs in one basket. And by basket, I mean country. You want to be in different countries. You want to be able to say that if the United States suffers some great recession, if the United States decides to go on a path, as they have in other countries like Cyprus, Greece, all the way down the line, and just making it very difficult to build wealth, uh, that you don't have to have all your eggs in that basket. And so don't change, you know, I always say don't, don't try and address the, the, the symptoms, address the causes. What I've done is I've stepped out of a system where I have to pay 40 or 50 percent tax, which then encourages you to go out and find cute little ways to 
uh, you know, put $5,000 here or $19,000 there to get a tax deduction, right? Or find cute little ways to put your money under the government's control so they can control all the terms in the hopes that those gains in the future may not be taxed, okay? I don't want the government controlling my money. I don't want them setting the terms. I want to invest on my own terms and I want to invest where I want in the best markets, not where they tell me can, I can invest, okay? I do not want, I do not trust the government with my money. I do not trust them to control it. And all you need to do, by the way, is look at, in the United States, look at Social Security, the world's greatest Ponzi scheme, you know, in the history of mankind, and other, every other country that has one too, where you put in money and, and the return is less than zero. I mean, if you just didn't put in money into Social Security and you, you literally put it in a cookie jar with, you know, rodents coming in, you know, biting away at it, you would have more money at retirement. The government is not very well known for its ability to handle money, and you shouldn't want them to be handling yours under their terms. So that is really my explanation for why if I'm in a country, uh, especially if I'm an entrepreneur and I can control where I go and control how I invest my money, uh, but even if I'm a freelancer or someone who can work remotely, I'm going to look at moving overseas, potentially uh, lowering or even eliminating my tax obligations, eliminating the incentive to give the government more control over my money, over my retirement, uh, and going where I'm treated best. That's my approach to retirement. And I've chosen uh, to take full control. Uh, I guess I'm entitled to about $1,100 in Social Security right now based on the years that I worked in the United States. And even as a former uh, American, former US citizen, I'm still entitled to that until they change those rules too, by the way, and that could be coming. But for everything else, I'm on my own. And I believe that I can do better uh, under my own system uh, than the government. And if, if I can't, then I guess shame on me and uh, I'll suffer. That's why I want you to control your retirement. That's why I think you should take more control and you should opt out of systems where you lose that control. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people. Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.